Hello students, in this video we'll prove that Cauchy sequences are conversion sequences. So here's our proposition. Given a sequence of real numbers and the real numbers are important here. We'll figure that out in a second. Real numbers a n n goes from 1 to infinity which is Cauchy then the sequence a n is convergent. Okay, here's the proof. I need a lemma first to prove this. Here's my lemma. Cauchy sequences are bounded. Okay, and so to prove this lemma, proof, take epsilon to be equal to one, and then we know there is an n, an n, such that what? Such that the difference between a n and a m is less than one if n and m are bigger than or equal to n. So in particular, since n is fixed and capital is fixed, this tells me that a little n minus a n capital is less than one if n is bigger than or equal to n. And so this tells me, therefore, that a n, using, rearranging this inequality using the triangle inequality, I can conclude that a n is less than 1 plus absolute value of a n. And this is valid for all n larger than n capital. And now what I can do is I can therefore claim, therefore, that the modulus of a n is less than or equal to the maximum of what set? The collection a1, a2, a n minus one, if you like, and then uh, just one plus a n. And so that says that a n is bounded. So the sequence is bounded. a n is bounded. So Cauchy sequences are bounded sequences. And now we can go to our proposition. So the proof of our proposition is the following. Proof, let epsilon be greater than zero, and pick and one of epsilon such that a n minus a m is less than epsilon over two if what? If n and n are bigger than or equal to n one of epsilon. Okay, now since a n is bounded, Bolzano Weierstrauss implies that there is an A such that what? Such that the limit as k goes to infinity of some subsequence a n sub k is equal to a. So there is a convergent subsequence by Bolzano Weierstrauss, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose choose n2 of epsilon such that what? Such that a n k minus a is less than epsilon over 2 if n k is bigger than or equal to n2 of epsilon. Okay, we can do that by the convergence, right? And now I'm going to choose, I'm going to define n capital of epsilon to be the maximum of those two. n capital of epsilon is just going to be the maximum of n1 of epsilon and n2 of epsilon so that both conditions are satisfied, so that this condition is satisfied and this condition is satisfied, right? Over here. And so now what I can do is this. Let's look at now the difference a n minus a. Well, what I can do is I can throw in an a n k over here. This is less than or equal to a n minus a n k plus a n k minus a. And now if n and n k are both bigger than or equal to this n capital of epsilon, then I know that this term over here will be small by Cauchy. That'll be less than epsilon over two. 
and this term over here will be small by the convergence, so this will be less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two, which is epsilon. And this shows that a n minus a is less than epsilon if n is bigger than n and epsilon. So our conclusion, therefore, is that our sequence a n converges to a, and our Cauchy sequence is therefore convergence. Now, what we've alluded to here is that I've used bolzano weierstrauss and bolzano weierstrauss is equivalent to the least upper bound principle for the real numbers. And we know that the least upper bound principle is not true for the rational numbers. So if this was a sequence of rational numbers, I would not get the same result. In fact, that gives us one alternate approach to constructing the real numbers as sequence, as limits of sequences of Cauchy sequences, module null Cauchy sequences. So the real numbers is an essential component of this proof because I've used bolzano weierstrauss which again is equivalent to the least upper bound principle for the real numbers. Thank you very much.